Welcome back to Leah's Leaves. Today is the long awaited video. We're going to talk winter sewing from start to finish, so stay tuned. Let me show you a finished one that's about to go outside. I'm planting radicchio in this jug, duct taped together, slit at the bottom under the handle, marked all over with a plant marker inside. I think you can see that to the left and a generous scattering of seeds in prepared potting mix and topped with vermiculite to hold moisture. First we start with containers. These are sanitized milk jugs. Some of them I asked friends to donate, others I dug out of the landfill dumpster diving to reclaim them from the recycling center. Uh, all of them have been bleached. They just got a cap full of bleach and then filled with super hot water. Put the cap on, give it a good shake, let it sit a few minutes, give it a good shake again, and then rinse it out thoroughly. And now they're on the floor in front of that fan, which I have turned off for the video, so that they air out very quickly. And we want them sanitized and completely dry uh, before we begin using them. Other containers work just as well. Uh, here I have a half gallon translucent jug. This was used to be a cat litter container and that's a juice bottle. The clear ones are great because it means all the light will penetrate in, but these work too. As long as you can see your finger when you put, when you hold your hand up to it, that means enough light's getting through for your plants. Another type of container that works really well is a two liter pop bottle. My little garden gnome Holly decided to, to come say hi. Hi Holly. You want to say hi to everybody? You just bored? She was upstairs all by herself while I was down here working. Hi, baby. The next step is to gather up some of the materials that you, well, all the materials that you'll need for preparing your jugs. Here I have some duct tape, plant markers to go inside the jug, some sharp kitchen scissors for cutting the jug, an X-Acto knife for poking holes in the bottom and vents in the top, and a garden marker, which is a fade resistant marker that will hold its color better than a Sharpie or a chalk pen or other types of markers. And of course, a seltzer water, which I'm never without when I'm working in my garden room. Oh, and look, a little parsley too. My neighbor gave me out of her raised bed just the other day here in January, and I repotted it and it's doing great. Okay, here's what I've done. I've taken this X-Acto knife and I've gone around the bottom of my jug and I've cut X's in the bottom. I hope you can see those. I'm gonna try to focus in on, there's one, there's another one. I also poked holes around about a half inch to an inch above the outer layer. The reason for that is because we want really good drainage so that those seeds inside stay moist but not drenched and to do what i did i just stuck it in and slit slit two short slits on the bottom and then for the vent holes around the bottom and top i just pushed it in and twisted a little bit pushed it in and twisted about a quarter turn all the way around so i have vent holes like here and they're peppered all the way around this area and then I used that X-Acto knife to poke two holes, just with a, a punch and a twist, on either side of the underside of the handle. You see those little holes there? And then I used my sharp scissors and I cut all the way around. I'm going to use this garden marker. I just bought a two-pack off of the internet. Um, other garden centers and box stores certainly carry things like this. The reason I'm using this is so that I can mark my uh, plant markers inside. This is what we're planting today. Some peas, some columbine, and some knee-high sweet peas. And it's also um, a great idea that I learned from Gardener Scott, who's another YouTuber. I'm going to link his video about this in the description. Gardener Scott had a wonderful video about winter sowing and he made a great suggestion that he had learned from some other source that instead of marking exactly what's going in the jug, 
just give it a one, a two, a three, a four, and number your jugs. And then keep a list indoors of which jug is holding which seeds. And of course, you'll have the proper plant marker inside anyway. The reason for this is because the jugs are reusable. And so if they're not labeled for a specific plant, then you're not tied to having to plant that same thing every year or have to scribble over marker and cover more of the surface area up. I'll also say that you can see that the label has been brought off. My mom was helping me do this. She lives with me. And one of the things she discovered was if you're trying to peel adhesive off the outside, if you put some hot water inside the jug while everything's still intact and sort of set the hot water on the opposite side of the adhesive, it peels off much faster. What I'm doing um, in my garden, though, is... I'm putting them out near my house, not under any eaves because I don't want to block the rain. But I want, uh, I want them to be close to the house because uh, I live in a windy area and it'll help to kind of buffer from the wind. But I'm leaving some of the labels on and then I'm just placing them in their area with the label facing away from the south side. They're going on the south side of my house. So any jug that still has a label on it will be facing the north side, which is the less sunny side anyway. And so there really won't be a significant impedance to the sun getting in. I would say if you live in a place that's a little shadier than mine is I get full sun on that side of the house most of the day. If you don't, if you're in a part shaded area or you have shorter days, you live in a, in a further north growing climate than I do or something, then go ahead and peel those labels off because that just lets as much light penetrate through as possible, which is healthy for your plants. Next, we wanna prepare our soil. And today my soil is gonna be using up some things that I have open already. Um, don't worry so much about getting an exact mix. Just think of the end game. What you want your soil to do is retain enough moisture to keep the roots nourished, but not so much that it doesn't drain properly and they get trapped in water and waterlogged or rot. And you want, uh, you don't want your soil to be too dry. You're going to set these jugs with the caps off outdoors and they're gonna get rain when it rains and they're gonna get snow when it snows and you're just gonna leave them there for a couple months and let them grow inside the jug. And the jug acts as a little miniature greenhouse, also called a poor man's greenhouse. So you'll see here uh, like potting soil from the Dollar Tree on the left, some Jiffy seed starting mix um, that I got at Walmart because I had a gift card from Christmas time, so I used it. Some perlite that I bought at Home Depot some coca core. Uh, I don't have anyone selling that near me, so I have to order that online. But it's my favorite um, seed growing medium. I prefer coconut core to peat because it's more sustainable and it works just as well. And then I'll add some vermiculite. You may also add some composted manure. This is cow compost that's been aged at a local farm in my area. Um, or you can use vegetable compost that you're getting from your own uh, garden. You can uh, add seed starting mix or potting mix or take your own soil and amend it with lots of nutrition. And because these aren't just going to sit in seed trays for a couple of weeks, they're going to sit there for like two or three months growing. And... Uh, so they need nutrition. They're going to use a lot. I have some heavy feeders. Cabbages, for example, are heavy feeders. And I have some cabbages started. So I'm going to also add some Trifecta Plus. This is a, a um, NPK of 5104. So that's the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium that helps plants to have healthy root systems, stems, nutritional uptake, and fruiting power. If you don't have Trifecta Plus, which um, MI Gardener sells at his store, another good one that's an organic, um, another organic option is fish and kelp blend. This is a liquid, and you just put a quarter of a cup in with a gallon of water and go through and water your plants. I'm also adding some bone meal 
to any of my fruiting plants and some blood meal to any of my leafy greens and herbs that don't produce fruit but produce a lot of foliage. Blood meal um, in particular is excellent for adding nitrogen to the soil um, for all of the leaves. But it's not good to add to all plants. If I want my tomato plant, my pepper plant, my eggplant, my melons, my cucumbers, zucchini, etc., to be concentrating on producing fruit, then I want to make sure that they have bone meal, that they're heavier on the, um, the potassium and phosphorus, because that's what produces good fruiting. And the blood meal or nitrogen products produce good leaves, good foliage. One more I'll show you. This is for edible plants. It's a 769 MPK, and it's a miracle Grow product. Um, maybe you have an issue with them. I don't, so I use this product too. This is a granular slow-release fertilizer similar to the Trifecta Plus, and I can add it and like just scratch it into the top of the soil so that it decays over time and blends in naturally every time there's a fresh rainfall or I water. So here's an example of the soil now that it's been blended. This is uh, a little bit of home compost, coca core, uh, a leftover half a bag of potting mix. It had literally like two cups in it, so two cups of that whole bin. This is an old cat litter <laughs> uh, container, by the way, <laughs> a nice big one, so it's good for mixing dirt. I also put in about, about three quarters of a cup each. That's not an exact measurement of vermiculite and perlite because that will help it to retain moisture and have good drainage. And now what we're going to do is add water. We want this, um, Callie Kim, who's another gardener on YouTube that I love, describes it best. She says you want it to be like crumbly brownie mix. So we're going to add some water here. I'm just going to start with a little bit. This is just by feel. It doesn't have to be exact. You can add more if you need more. You can add less if you need less. You can also add things like um, worm castings. You can add a little bit of sand if you have drainage issues in the soil that you're using. Sand will help to improve uh, drainage and moisture retention. But perlite and vermiculite do the job very nicely. So if I squeeze this, it's still too dry. It's still too crumbly. It's not holding together firmly, but not wet. So I'm going to add just a little bit more water. And we just do this by feel. Okay, I just added a little. I mixed a little. I added a little water. I mixed a little water. And now I have this consistency. Check this out. I'm going to bring this close to the microphone so you can hear it. It sounds spongy. If I squeeze it into a ball, it holds its shape. If I squeeze it tightly, there's water in it. It's moist, but it's not dripping out. That's perfect for what we want in our jugs. Let me find a way to pause my video with all my dirty. Next step is to fill it with the soil. That's lightly packed. I didn't press hard. I did press a little bit to get some of the air pockets out. It is moist, but not wet, and it's not leaking out the bottom. So it's completely dry on the table underneath that container. So now we're gonna sow our seeds. Okay, we are gonna plant some knee-high sweet peas. This is what the seeds look like. They look like small peas. Except these sweet peas are grown for their flowers. And I'm just going to sprinkle these around, give them each some independent space. Make sure they're kind of spread out. I'm going to scratch them in. You could do this with a dibbler, your finger. We're going to top it off with just a handful of... Uh, little bit of our soil mixture. I put the marker in at an angle. Let me see if I can show you the angle. That way when you look down through the top of the opening of the jug, 
you'll be able to actually read it. It won't be vertical and you're trying to angle your head to <laughs> figure out, wait, what did I plant in there? So that's the easiest way to read it. We're just putting a light sprinkling of our moist soil on. We're gonna give it just a little more water. I don't have my sprinkler head on this, so I'll just do a light watering this way. But it'll be fine, because we're getting rain this weekend anyway. And then the last thing we're gonna do is sprinkle some vermiculite on top. I have to show you something. My potatoes have emerged. I just have white potatoes from a grocery store bag that had started to chit, so I chopped them up, stuck them in the dirt on January 17th. Today is January 28th, and I have little plants emerging. Look at that baby. I'm gonna have potatoes and vermiculite. There's about a cup in here. I won't use all of it. This is a really great way to prevent some of the surface soil, the soil, excuse me, the soil surface pests that like to congregate. It's also a great way to sort of lightly mulch without packing down your seeds because vermiculite weighs nothing. It's really lightweight, airy product. Um, it weighs less than marshmallows. So it's a lightweight product. But as, as that container receives moisture from outdoors, either because of natural rain and snow or because you've checked it periodically and you've noticed when it's closed and taped up, you'll be able to see condensation on the inside. That shows you that it's retaining moisture and that the greenhouse effect is working. You have to check every once in a while if you go through a dry spell and make sure that that condensation is under that surface. If it's not, then you'll need to manually water and carry that plant through until the next rain or snow fall. The last thing we do is fasten our jug shut. Now I wanted to show you a couple of things about this. This method of duct taping all the way around, getting a good seal, I'll go over this one more time once it's outside, um, all the way around the slit that you've cut around the edge, that was the original version created by um, Trudy Davidoff, the person who invented this method. Along the way, other people who've practiced winter sewing have come up with some other really clever ideas. So one is to use your tape. Oh wait, let me, let me remind you of one extra task. That's after you've put the soil in, you're gonna wanna make sure that the surface is free and clear of the moist soil or any other smudges so that the tape will stick. But some clever people have tried this instead. Instead of taping all the way around, they just put a couple of strips up each side away from the hinge. And I might add another two more there at the slit. But what that does is it builds in your vent, your vent holes closer to the soil surface and gives some ventilation in there so that not too much heat and moisture collect, especially as your days begin to warm up. Uh, and if you live in a zone like mine, you'll have like a freak cold spell followed by eight days in the 70s and 80s and then another cold snap between now and May when our last frost date happens. So this would be great because um, when it's cold, it's sealed enough to keep enough heat in for the greenhouse effect, but when it's warm, it has enough ventilation to let some of the excess heat out so you don't risk burning your plants. Two more ideas to try for fastening, and I haven't ever tried either of these yet. Of course, this is my first year winter sewing, and only in, until recently was I just doing Trudy's method, and that seems like a good idea so far. But some other people had poked, like use a hole puncher, and poke a hole here and here, and then tie it shut with a twist tie so that you can unlock, you can open and close it at will throughout the season and just flip the whole top open to water or to let in more sunlight on a really sunny warm day uh, or if you need to top up your soil or 
if your plants are ready to transplant out, they're really easy to get to and it makes the jug uh, very easy to reuse. And the last idea was to avoid all this cutting all together and just take your intact jug and find a blank space on it and cut a window above the soil line, open it up, put your soil inside, put your seeds inside, put your plant marker inside, and then just fasten that shut. And not even the whole way around. If you don't want to add additional vent holes, it's, it's like a flap, you know? And so you pull the flap down, do what you need to do inside the jug, put the flap up, seal it shut, but leave some ventilation on the sides perhaps, or in the corners. And that again is another way that you don't cut up your jug so much and it would be easier to reuse. It still has good ventilation. The only drawback to that method is that you have less space to get your hands inside the jug. So I think for my purposes and because I have small chubby hands, I would still prefer the method where you cut all the way around except the hinge because then I can flip it all the way open, put my soil in, put my seeds in, put my plant marker in, seal it shut either this way or the way we did the radicchio bottle. And one way or another, I'd have a prepared jug. Now the last thing I'm gonna do before I place these outside in the open, not under eaves, not against a shady wall, not against a wall at all, because you wanna make sure that nothing is preventing airflow, water, or, or snow from getting into your jugs is I'm going to number these jugs. Now, when I first started this project a few weeks ago, I was writing the name of the plant in multiple places just with a Sharpie. That's what I did here. But now that I my garden marker came, I'm going to go back over all the jugs that I've sown already and all that I plan to sow and use the numbering system that Gardener Scott recommended. And it'll be so much easier. It'll be less marking. It'll be less mess on the jug if, if it wears off. I'll also draw, draw those numbers in a map on a piece of paper so that as they're laid outside, even if, even if the numbers end up smudging off, I'll still know which plant is which because they'll be in a particular place lined up shoulder to shoulder. Okay, I hope this helps. Um, keep your jugs clear on the outside so that the tape stays secure. Be careful when you're cutting. Um, I'm going to link two excellent videos about winter sewing below this. Actually, three. I just thought of a third one that will give you additional information or maybe alternative ideas that I didn't share today. One is from Gardener Scott. One is from Susan's in the Garden. And one was from a university workshop, the, the extension program or something uh, related to the agricultural department did an excellent workshop that I watched. And all three of these are YouTube videos that I would recommend you see so that you have an idea of uh, how to winter sew. The last thing I'll say before I sign off and before my phone loses its battery is that um, the plants themselves will give you a clue as to whether they're appropriate for winter sewing or not. So, for example, uh, I have um, Alaska Shasta daisies. So if they're in Alaska, they're bred to endure winter weather, so they'd be perfect for winter sowing. Anything that says native perennial, that's a perennial that in your zone is going to come back year after year. That means it can survive a winter. If it can survive a winter, it can survive winter sowing. Any of your cold tolerant vegetables like lettuces and other hardy greens and most brassicas, can be started using winter sowing. Onions are terrific for winter sowing. You can get a big old batch of onions from seed in, and generously put them in the jug. And three months from now, you'll have all the little miniature onions that are basically your own homegrown set that you can plant out. Seeds are cheaper than sets and winter sowing is a space-free, easy method for growing onions. Uh, chives, other herbs, uh, especially perennial herbs like oregano, thyme, parsley, uh, sage. They would all do wonderful in the winter sowing process. Many uh, northern plants, if it says alpine or glacier or mountain or uh, 
year round, you know, any kind of clue in the name of the plant is sure to be able to survive the winter sowing process. You can even use this method for your warm weather crops. You'll just winter sow in the spring. So you can, you can direct sow your pepper seeds, eggplants, cucumbers, zucchinis, melons, tomatoes in jugs outside, no need for grow lights, no need for seed starting trays and do the same method, but just like two months later. So start your winter flowers and herbs and lettuces and brassicas now. And then in March, end of March, early April, start your peppers, tomatoes, and other warm weather crops in using the same method. And in that case, you watch the weather because if it gets too hot for too long, you'll dry out your plants or scorch them. So the easiest solution to that is just pop the top off the untape it and fling the top of your jug back. If your nights are going to get cold, tape them back on. But they can withstand the, they, the, they love the sunshine, they love the warm weather, and they'll do great in those jugs. I'm learning so much, really, really a lot, and I'm sharing it here. Come grow with me. Bye.